It's a new campaign group which describes itself as the most significant women's movement since the suffragettes. The group is called Respect My Sex If You Want My Ex, which means their vote, not their ex-boyfriend. They're campaigning ahead of local elections next week to get politicians to answer that simple question. What is a woman? They've also attracted some prominent supporters, including J.K. Rowling, and more about that picture in a moment. Joining me now are the three women who set up the group, Heather Binning, Maya Forstater and Caroline Fisk. Ladies, good to see you. Thanks so much for coming to the studio. One of the questions you want politicians to answer is this. Can a woman have a penis? Maya, why is that so important to you? Because, uh, in, particularly in single-sex spaces like changing rooms, toilets, prisons, uh, they're single-sex for a reason, because sex is biological, and women and girls taking a shower shouldn't have to um, be surprised by someone with a penis. <laughs> Yep. Basically. OK, and, and if politicians can't answer that question or answer it in the way you'd like them to, don't vote for them. Absolutely. You can't protect women's rights if you can't define what a woman is. Heather, so I'm clear, because this is a complicated debate, isn't it? The difference between you and some in the trans lobby is you think people can change their gender but not their sex. Well, generally, we don't actually agree that there is a gender. It's a you know, social construct. But I don't have a problem if people want to describe themselves by this gender. Mm. But sex is very specific, and we have to be able to specify the sex of individuals. Only today, I think, there is a, a new report out from the Asthma and Lung Association saying female hormones are likely to produce um, a, a harsher... Um, symptoms if you get an asthma attack that's uh, that's about sex that's not about gender at all so and there are other issues in medicine and um, sport that there are significant differences because of the biological sex and so regardless of whether you have a gender or not sex must always be specified and understood okay well that's quite clear caroline let me turn to you all three of you believe women are generally in danger uh, unless they heed these warnings. Why is that? Well, okay, so sex matters. Men and women are different. Um, and men tend to be the ones who are, you know, commit more violent offences. Um, so it's absolutely critical that women have single-sex spaces and safe spaces. So it's critical that women have single-sex toilets, single-sex changing rooms, single-sex hospital wards, single-sex prisons and sport. So just to go back over two of those prisons, there's just been a story from America where um, somebody who identified as trans has been in a woman's prison and has raped a woman. So it's just extraordinary that in this day and age we said that because a man has identified as a woman that he should be in a woman's prison and now he's gone and raped somebody. So it's absolutely clear that men should not be in women's prisons. And similarly, sport. I mean, men are bigger and heavier and stronger and faster than women. So they shouldn't be in women's sports. Mm. And it's a safety issue as well as a fairness issue. Now, you're aware of what the other side of this argument say. They say you're demonising trans people by making this argument. What's your response to that? We're not demonising anyone. We're all moral equals. What we want is an open debate. So over the last few years, really, there's been no open debate on this. There's been no free speech. So this is also a free speech issue. We must be able to have the debate reasonably and rationally and make our arguments. So it would be fantastic if there was somebody here today who could have the open debate. Maya, the thing is, you are at odds with the current law of the land on this, you, because you can legally become a woman if you're transitioning in preoperation, or if you still have a penis, in other words, with two doctors declaring that. Do you want to change the law? Um, we, you can legally change your sex, but that law then has exceptions for single-sex services, for sport, for um, hereditary peerage, so, in fact, although you can change your sex in terms of what it says on your birth certificate, that doesn't mean mm. you should be able to use opposite-sex services or be able to play in opposite-sex sports. And the Equality and Human Rights Commission has recently come out with something clarifying the law on that. So it's not that we want to change the law. Um, it's more that we want organisations to follow the law as it already stands, which is that you're allowed to have single-sex services which are based on biological sex. Mm. And you can still respect people's identity and people's freedom to wear what they like and to call themselves what they like but where sex matters it is sex that matters
Now, the author, J.K. Rowling, uh, is a big supporter of yours, yours she is. in particular, yes. mine. She threw a lunch for you um, at the River Cafe, which is one of London's <laughs> smartest restaurants. I've never been there, you have. Uh, well done, you. It was quite an extraordinary lunch, and we can see a picture of it now. There you are uh, in, in the middle of that. Perhaps you might have had a drink or two, perhaps all of you. What was, what was it like to be there, all those people with uh, a similar mentality to you? It, it, was, it was lovely. I mean, we were... Um, it, it was a lot of women who've been attacked for their views, whether in the workplace or as journalists, um, quite a few lesbians there who've been attacked for saying that lesbians don't have a penis. Um, and to have J.K. Rowling standing up for us and inviting us for lunch, it, it, it was lovely. And we were really just celebrating how far we've come in terms mm. of bringing this debate into the, into the public domain and um, getting politicians to, to pay attention. You lost your job over this whole argument, and it was that J.K. Rowling's tweet in support of you uh, that got her into the firing line over all this. It, it kind of feels like we're almost sort of comrades in arms together now. Yes, and, and I had never... I mean, that lunch was the first time I met her. I had no idea that she was paying attention to my case, and then when I lost the first part of my case in 2019, the day after she, she tweeted and sort of all, all hell broke loose... Um, so it's been amazing to have her support and then obviously I went back to court um, and I won uh, the next part of that case, so she was right. OK. Well, it's been really good talking to you. Thanks for coming in. Heather, Maya and Caroline. See you Thank soon, you. hopefully.